Hey everyone, and welcome to module four. In this module, you'll learn how gametes are formed in both plants and animals, and how fertilization occurs. Now, as we go through the next two videos on human reproduction, keep this in mind. What you're about to see is how every single human who's ever lived came to exist. So, let's get to work. First, let's review the basics of sexual reproduction. During sexual reproduction, a male creates sperm, and a female creates an egg. This is accomplished through a combination of mitosis and meiosis. In males, this process is called spermatogenesis, and in females, it's called oogenesis. Genesis means the beginning of or the production of something. So, spermatogenesis is the production of sperm. Oogenesis is the production of the ovum or egg cell. The plural for ovum is ova, but the plural for sperm is just sperm. Remember that fertilization is the fusion of the egg, which carries the female's chromosomes, and the sperm, which carries the male's chromosomes, to form the zygote. This is a zygote just after fertilization. So, you can still see the nucleus that came from the sperm and the nucleus of the egg. The precise meaning of the term fertilization is the fusion of these two nuclei to form one nucleus containing both the male's chromosomes and the female's chromosomes. But more generally, the term fertilization can refer to the infiltration of the egg by the sperm. In this video, we'll examine spermatogenesis. In the next video, we'll get to oogenesis and fertilization. But before we get to spermatogenesis, let's quickly review meiosis and mitosis. Recall that if we have a diploid cell, as it goes through G1S and G2, the chromosomes are replicated. When mitosis occurs, two diploid cells are produced, both with the same number of chromosomes as the parent cell. Before a diploid cell goes through meiosis, it also goes through G1, S, and G2, and it replicates its chromosomes. After meiosis 1, there are two cells, and in this generic diagram of meiosis, there are two of each chromosome after meiosis 1. But if the chromatids stay together, as they do in humans, then these cells only have one of each chromosome, even though they have two of each chromatid. So they're actually haploid. Because remember, the term haploid means the cell has one of each chromosome type, and this is one chromosome. As these two cells go through meiosis two, four cells are produced, also haploid, but now they only have one of each chromatid, and one copy of each gene. Note that the production of four haploid gametes for each round of meiosis only occurs in human males. In males, these four cells become sperm, but in females, three cells are produced, only one of which is a gamete, the egg. Okay, that's the end of our mini review. Let's get to spermatogenesis. For this video, we have three questions. And our three questions are, how does spermatogenesis occur in humans? What are the names of the cells formed? And 
How does ploidy and chromosome number change throughout spermatogenesis? Spermatogenesis occurs in the testes of males. Within the testes, there are a series of tubes called seminiferous tubules. This is where most of spermatogenesis takes place. If we zoom into one tubule, at the outermost part of the tubule, we find diploid cells called spermatogonia. One of these cells is a spermatogonium. Note that I'm not going to show nuclei in this diagram. This spermatogonium is the cell that will undergo meiosis and produce the sperm. Let's follow one chromosome type with the hypothetical A gene as it goes through meiosis. The spermatogonium goes through G1, S, and G2. Once it enters prophase 1, it's now considered a primary spermatocyte. In the seminiferous tubules, the primary spermatocytes are found just inside the spermatogonia. Looking back at our cell division diagram, when the spermatogonium went through S phase, the chromosomes were replicated. And during prophase, they condensed. The primary spermatocyte goes through the rest of meiosis I, forming two cells called secondary spermatocytes, with each of them getting one of each chromosome. In the tubules, the secondary spermatocytes are found just inside the primary spermatocytes. Notice that the primary spermatocyte is a diploid cell because it has two of each chromosome, but the secondary spermatocytes are haploid because they only have one of each chromosome. Remember, the terms haploid and diploid refer to the number of chromosomes a cell has, not the number of gene copies. Even though secondary spermatocytes have two copies of each gene, they're haploid because this is considered to be only one chromosome. The secondary spermatocytes go through meiosis II, producing four haploid cells. These cells are called spermatids. They then go through differentiation, which is basically a cell becoming a more specialized version of itself, and is often accompanied by changes to cell structure and function. In this case, the cells shrink and develop a tail to become sperm. Once they fully matured, Sperm are also known as spermatozoa. It's these four sperm with one copy of each chromosome and one copy of each gene that are the products of one spermatogonium going through meiosis. The entire process from spermatogonium to fully mature sperm takes about 50 days. It starts at puberty and continues throughout the male's life, producing millions of sperm every single day. At this point, try to answer the question how many chromosomes and chromatids are present in each of these cells in human males. I'll give you a few seconds to pause the video. Okay, the spermatogonia have 46 chromosomes in G1. Once these chromosomes are replicated and condensed, there will be 46 chromosomes, but each has two chromatids, so there are 92 chromatids in the primary spermatocyte. When this cell splits during meiosis I, each cell gets half the chromosomes, so each will have 23 chromosomes 
and each chromosome has two chromatids, so each cell has 46 chromatids. When these cells split again, each cell gets half of the chromatids, so each sperm gets 23, and since they're no longer paired, each spermatid also has 23 chromosomes, which it will contribute to the zygote when the egg gets fertilized. In our tubule, the spermatids and sperm are inside the other cells. Spermatogenesis proceeds from the outside of the tubule inward. So to summarize, the spermatogonia develop into primary spermatocytes, which divide through meiosis I into two secondary spermatocytes, which go through meiosis II, yielding four spermatids, which then differentiate into sperm. We can see this in an actual seminiferous tubule here. Here's the outside of one tubule. The spermatogonia will be about here, the primary spermatocytes about here, the secondary spermatocytes about here, and the spermatids and sperm about here. From there, they'll enter the lumen and make their way to the epididymis to continue maturation. Now, if all the spermatogonia underwent meiosis all at once, soon there wouldn't be any spermatogonia left to produce more sperm. Fortunately, this does not happen, because some spermatogonia, instead of undergoing meiosis, undergo mitosis, making more of themselves. So a constant supply of spermatogonia is produced by mitosis. But one might ask, what made the first spermatogonia? These were formed when spermatogonial stem cells, which can also renew themselves by mitosis, developed into spermatogonia. This starts to occur when the male is just an embryo. But again, in adult males, the spermatogonia can replenish themselves by mitosis. Okay, that's it for this video on spermatogenesis. By now, you should understand how spermatogenesis occurs in humans and be able to remember the names of these cells and how chromosome number changes throughout spermatogenesis. Remember to fill out the learning guide, and I'll see you all in the next video on oogenesis and fertilization.